Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Rohit Sani, a JR3 in the Department of Orthopedics, Tiva Patel Hospital. Uh, we are coming to the 10th PG session of the PG teaching session brought to you by Tiva Patel Orthopedics Department and Ortho Team. Uh, for today's session, it's a short case on the elbow examination. Presenter will be Dr. Maitre Patel. Convener will be Dr. Sanjay Dhar and Dr. Prakash Samanso. Examiner will be Dr. Prakash Samanso and Dr. Sunil Shetty. I give my give the mic forward to Dr. Saman sir to take over. Yeah, good evening all. Uh, Department of Orthopedics Divya Patil invites you for the tenth postgraduate clinic for postgraduate students who are appearing for exams, final year exams. Uh, I hope this becomes an interactive session and there will be some add. knowledge can be added to whatever you have read so far i request uh, maitreya to start his presentation yes sir uh, good evening respected faculty members and my fellow colleagues today i will be presenting a short case on a 12 years old male child case of left sided cubitus varus deformity uh, due to trauma which has a carrying angle of 10 degrees flexion restricted to 0 to 90 degrees most likely secondary to post traumatic case of left sided distal humerus fracture closed with no neuro deficit patient currently has complaints of pain since the past 10 to 15 days and has come to the uh, opd due to restricted flexion patient was all right on on uh, history my positive findings are history of fall approximately 1 year ago while climbing stairs after that patient was given an above elbow cast for approximately 3 weeks after cast removal he he was taken to an ayurvedic medical practitioner where bone setting was and massage was done coming to examination my positive findings on examination are on inspection no no uh, maitreya what yes. happened there after after the history of fall one year back treated with a cast and massage with bone setter what yes. happened origin duration progress what happened uh, so after Did that he reached uh, you yes sir so after that approximately for 8 to 9 months his pain was decreased and in this year in january his pain started again for which he went and consulted a local doctor in navi mumbai who advised some x rays and after that he came to dr divya patel hospital sir in between he had any other fall or any other symptoms pertaining to that elbow no sir after the bone setting and ayurvedic treatment with massage his symptoms are decreased okay any other functional impairment sir uh, pronation is restricted no 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 functional impairment means whether he is able to carry out his routine work like writing holding of objects yes sir so he is able to perform buttoning and unbuttoning combing his head mm. and lifting his arm above the head there mm. no complaints as such in day to day activities mm. you said there was a history of massage yes sir so what things can happen following a history uh, of massage for any musculoskeletal injury so after massage patient can develop uh, increased aggregation of hematoma which can lead to myositis ossificans okay in one which there is progressive calcification uh, okay. secondly there can be neurovascular injuries hmm And in this case there... in this case any neurovascular injury if at all has to take place what neurovascular injury can take place in this so patient most Yes, sir. So most commonly, the anterior interosseous nerve branch of the median nerve can get injured in such types of fractures. Okay. Now, in general, anything else can happen because of massage, apart from myositis, neurovascular damage. Uh, so the there can be impairment of blood supply, leading hmm. to any ischemic changes. Any have you seen? Have you process? seen any patient? history of uh, massage leading to gangrene no sir top common yes 
there no, can no. be stiffness of the joint patient will say yes, that sir. i am gradually my movements are getting restricted one yes sir a third third thing is there can be an increase formation of an blister which yes, may sir. lead to formation of an infection this blister can be a predisens for getting infection in that elbow yes sir okay yes sir thank you now you come to examine Uh, so i have examined the patient in sitting position from the front sides and the back on mm-hmm. inspection there is a gross deformity varus deformity of at the left elbow with slight internal rotation of the attitude mm-hmm. then uh, following that sir there are no scars styluses or dilated veins mm-hmm. the carrying ang- angle measured was 10 degrees in varus So coming to palpation. How do you part, how do you define carrying angle? So carrying angle is defined as the long ang- the axis drawn along the shaft of the humerus intersecting at the physeal line of the lateral condyle. The angle be- is called uh, of the forearm. The longitudinal axis along the, of the median of plane of the forearm and forearm. arm. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Is the carrying angle? Okay. Why is the carrying angle more in females? Mm-hmm. Uh, so the carrying angle is more in females uh, is to accommodate the pelvis because females have a wider pelvis secondly sometimes it can be more due to the ligamentous laxity as well ligamentous laxity yes mild sensation may- is what is a type of what so it's a uh, progressive formation what of what is mild sensation ossificans a type of uh So it's a type of heterotrophic ossification. Heterotrophic os. Yes. Now, when you Heterophic measure the carrying angle, yes. Sir. How do you examine the carrying angle? Uh, sir, for carrying angle, you use a goniometer to put mm. it along. Uh, you measure. Uh, you measure the carrying angle in extension and supination. You place the goniometer, one arm of the goniometer, along the axis of the humerus. My the th- just one minute, my dear. Uh, Rohit, now uh, that patient's screen has gone. Yes, sir. I'll just ch- have a look at it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Proceed, my dear. Uh, so the goniometer's one arm is placed at the humerus axis of the humerus, long axis of the humerus. The mm-hmm. center is placed at the elbow, center point of the elbow, and the other axis is placed along the ulna. Now, what should be the position of the elbows? So it should be extended and in supination. So that you have to tell, no. Yes, Both the forearms should be extended in extension and supination, yes, full supination. Yes, sir. and yes, then sir. you must examine the carrying angle. Yes, sir. Okay. Hmm. Yes, sir. Proceed. Uh, sir, can I ask one question to Maitre? Yeah, yeah. Ask. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, Maitre, I just wanted to only one answer of two on, only one question. What are the yes, pre pre requisites for measuring the carrying angle? What are the pre requisites? uh so both the el- patient should be stripped from uh from the neck until the uh, bottom of the middle finger what are so the both el- the elbows should be visible huh and uh, what is the most should- important things that are okay which is the which are yes, most sir. important things to be looked for before measuring a carry angle patient uh, so should extension. not have what direct question Yes, two things to be most important before measuring carrying angle. Otherwise, you cannot measure it. It is not a prerequisite for measuring carrying angle. If the patient has got a flexion deformity, carrying yes, angle is yes. out. Okay, sir. Yes. Hmm? Your elbow should be fully extended and it should be supinated. The patient should yes. able to position as well as full extension. Yes, Otherwise, sir. you cannot calculate. Right? Okay. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. One minute. Rohit, what is going on with you? No, sir. It's all good, sir. It's all good. Because my friend, it's a photo. It's a photo. It's a DP. It's a. No, sir. Screen, sorry, sir. Left side, la. Correct. Hey, some phone. My friend's static photo is there, which is put on the DP. Ah, see. He's standing near the lake and presenting. <laughs> Maitre, you proceed. Yes, sir. Uh, so coming to palpation, 
I have confirmed all inspection <coughs> findings on palpation. There is uh, no superficial tenderness present. The there is no local rise of temperature. No, but you have not told the inspective findings. Uh, sir, on inspection, sir, uh, there is a slight internal rotation. And what is slight internal rotation? <laughs> Uh, so uh, in the forearm is slightly internally rotated, sir. Forearm is internally rotated where? Which joint? Uh, sir, at the elbow joint, sir. From the, from the, elbow. the elbow joint. Is there rotation at the elbow? Uh, uh, the How do you make rotation, rotation that, at the elbow? So the rotation is at the proximal radial ulnar joint and uh, distal radial ulnar joint, sir. Proximal and distal radial nerve joint. Your diagnosis is a fracture lower end of uh, humerus, na? Yes, sir. How did you get rotation and superior and inferior radial nerve joint? <laughs> the patient cannot supinate his hand, is it? Uh, he can, sir. He can do supination and pronation both. Then why do you say supination? Oh, yes. Actually, the deformity is present Inter at distal humerus. We can still cannot see you and the patient. Sunil, just rotate the slide. Then you can see your photo, Maitre, and Maitre is lateral. Just a minute. So then I can see you. Just ah, slide sir. the slide the screen so that you can see my tray. My tray. Yes, sir. So how how do you? Uh, so varus deformity is uh, basically cubitus varus is. Um, inward deviation towards the midline of the body compared to the axis of the arm at the elbow in full extension, sir. Hmm. Proceed. Yes, sir. So, on uh, coming to palpation, sir, so I have checked for the three point bony uh, prominences. The mm -hmm. three-point bony prominence on the left side is not maintained compared to the right side. Mm -hmm. What do you so, mean by uh, configuration? So, three-point bony configuration is a palpation of the medial epicondyle, lateral epicondyle, and the olive tip of olecranon process. Mm -hmm. So, generally, they form an isosceles triangle. Mm -hmm. And How, sir, uh, can you show on the yes, patient? Sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. What is an isosceles triangle? So an isosceles triangle is where uh, two sides of the triangle are the same other than the base. What is a scalene triangle? So scalene triangle is where all three sides of the triangle are not equal. So this triangle is scalene or isosceles? Sir, um, isosceles, sir. It's a scalene triangle. You just show how you do. You ask the patient to keep both his hands on the iliac crest mm -hmm. and turn around. Mm -hmm. You can see on the normal side the lateral condyle, the medial condyle, and the tip of polycrimal process. Mm -hmm. So, the why I asked you is you yes. have to stand behind the patient. Yes, sir. Okay? Not from yes. the lateral or anteriorly, or take his elbow and turn around. To you. Yes, sir. Huh? You have to stand absolutely posterior to the patient and whatever the position he has kept, you mark the bony prominences with the pen on both the sides and then compare. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, tell, tell him to sit. Start. Proceed. So, what is your finding? Uh, so, my finding is that the distance between the olecranon and lateral epicondyle is reduced as compared to the normal side. 
Okay. It is two centimeters, whereas on the opposite side, on the normal side, it is it is four centimeters. Sir. Okay. Proceed. Uh, so then you can also palpate uh, a ridge over here on the lateral condyle. Mm. The ulnar nerve is palpated, and so mm. there is no local rise in temperature or tenderness anywhere. Mm. So according to movement, length of the elbow. Yes, so the Length of the elbow is measured from the Many range of range of movements. Sir, uh, coming to the range of movements, sir, uh, the patient has flexion zero to ninety degrees and extension from ninety to hundred degrees. So uh, ninety to uh, zero degrees. Uh, the patient does not have hyperextension. Hmm. And coming to supination and pronation, the patient has a uh, supination zero to ninety degrees and pronation zero to seventy degrees. Okay. Now, what is the age of the patient? So the patient's age is twelve years old. Twelve years of age. Have you measured yes, the length? Yes, sir. I have. So no, normal or lengthened or shortened? Uh, so on the left side, it is lengthened compared to the right side. Okay. Yes. Okay. Any other findings? Um, uh, no, sir. Which is important. <laughs> Sir, any tingling sensations are, are not there. You have to check for the palpable mass. Yes, sir. Posteriorly as well as anteriorly, because you yes, said sir. there is a history of massage. Yes. Okay. So yes, there is no palpable mass felt around the elbow no, anteriorly and posteriorly. Okay. Now, suppose if myositis has to form, where it will be common? Where do you check? So it will be mostly common in the brachialis anticus muscle, uh, anterior to the uh, uh, yes, uh, 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 to the cubital fossa. Okay. Now the other question is whether this uh, def uh, this deformity is static or dynamic. Uh, so I would call this deformity as progressive, dynamic. Most likely I would because call did the patient. Tell you or the patient's father that this deformity is gradually increasing now. No, sir. You have examined the patient yes. today, no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So how will you know it is progressive? Yes. Sir. Unless you have seen this patient three months before. Yes, sir. So did you ask the patient's father that this disease is increasing or it has now remained at this stage only? Uh, sir, I asked him. He hmm. said earlier there was uh, more range of movement, which has now become a bit restricted. Okay. 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 Suppose his father was not there. Okay. Then is yes, there sir. any other method where you would have detected this sudden increase in deformity just by speaking to the child or someone, say his elder brother, maybe? As a clinician, yes. let's just say father is not the informant right now. And you yes. want to know the sudden change in the deformity. Is there a way how you can gauge that? Like, let's just say this deformity has increased in the past six months or maybe in around the past one year. I mean, are so there can, any parameters uh, that you know of? Uh, sir, I can ask the child whether his day-to-day -day movements have been restricted comparatively three months back and today. Or uh, any significance of any age? Uh, yes, sir. The uh, ossification no, centers. Okay, no, not that is radiological. I am talking yes. about any significance of age. Do you think uh, this can, you know, suddenly increase around the growth spots whenever they occur in this child? Yes, sir. Uh, so the pre-pubertal stage. The parents will tell you, right? That, you know, this yes, is suddenly increased or whatever, whenever there's a growth spot. So do you know when yes. does all these growth spots occur? Like since yes, childhood? Sir. Yes, sir. In males, they are around uh, 12 to 14 years of age. And in females, it's early around 12 to 13 years of age. Which is the okay, pre-pubertal phase? Sir, I don't know, sir. Uh, so you have to read, okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Proceed. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, sir, coming to my diagnosis, the case is most likely. Pronation and pronation is normal, no? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Sir. And no neurologic deficit. No, sir. What nerves you have examined? Uh, so I have examined the anterior interosseous nerve, the ulnar nerve, the radial nerve, mm. okay. yes, and 
Yes. How oh, how do you examine the anterior interosseous nerve? So the anterior interosseous nerve is examined with the OK sign because of the flexion of the interphalangeal joint of the thumb and the index finger. What does the anterior interosseous nerve supply? Uh, so the anterior interosseous nerve mostly supplies the uh, flexor muscles of the forearm, sir. Mostly all. No, sir, not all. Which few muscles? of flexor muscles of the forearm. Few. Uh, so the which sort of my flexor muscles for MS or the. Yes. Mostly all, few. No, you have to be specific. Yes, sir. Which it doesn't supply. The rest it will supply. Which it supply? Is that I bold? Sir, uh, <coughs> it the, it supplies the uh, deep muscles of the forearm, sir. Deep. What are the deep yes. muscles? Uh, so the of. Uh, The flexor digitorum profundus, mm. the pronator quadratus, mm. and thumb, thumb. What goes to the thumb? The flexor pollicis longus. Okay. अब कौन से flexor को वो नहीं करता है? अच्छा सर sorry sir sir बोल लीजिए. Branch of? अ सर सब branch of median nerve sir. Okay. proceed yes sir uh, so coming to my diagnosis my patient a 12 year old child a case of left sided cubitus varus deformity secondary to trauma is most likely due to post traumatic distal humerus fracture closed with no dura duction hey distal humerus humerus includes what all fractures uh, so it could be a lateral condyle of the humerus fracture or medial condyle of the humerus fracture and uh, Comminuted supracondylar fracture. Comminuted supracondylar fracture. Why should a comminuted supracondylar fracture give rise to pronation, supination, restriction? So I feel more likely it is uh, not only supracondylar and more of a comminuted supracondylar because the three-point bony prominence is not maintained, which is maintained in a supracondylar fracture. Hmm. That's why I said I said the comminuted supracondylar fracture. You said medial condyle or lateral condyle. Both malunited. Hmm. Ah, uh, malunited lateral condyle fracture and malunited medial condyle fracture. Both can give you virus. No, so generally malunited lateral condyle of the humerus fracture gives virus deformity. Lateral condyle gives virus. Why? Ah, uh, so mostly because of the uh, distal fragment. Is impacted in extension, or sometimes th- there could be a medial tilt or a medial rotation. Rotation. What are the rotations in this cubital? What are the three deformities in this cubital varus? So the three deformations seen in cubital varus are uh, the varus deformity, the hyperextension deformity, and internal rotation deformity. and internal rotation deformity how do you measure the rotational deformity so the rotational deformity is uh, can be measured on sagittal plane sir nahi nahi clinically sorry sir axial plane um, clinically can you know whether there is a rotational element yes sir we can can you demonstrate Just focus the camera towards my three, Rohit. Hmm. So for uh, rotation, so we we have uh, a Yamamoto test in which you ask the patient to flex forward. If you can answer, please look. Niche, you ask the patient to flex. both the elbows and then check the rotation for the affected side so you can see there is a rotation in the left move the elbow na move this you have to move it what will happen if it doesn't flex the head neck sir uh, the deformity won't be visible sir the rotational deformity nahi no. 
now where, where is the rotation seen sir uh, it is seen here yes, sir at the distal humerus compared to the normal side both look similar nahin nahin it doesn't look similar sunil nahi sir he has to ex- uh, rotate it further both has to be rotated further ha huh. Mm-hmm. If there is a rotational deformity, one will rotate more than the other, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. What will you do now? You have examined the patient. Yes, sir. Yes. 12-year-old mm-hmm. patient. Progressive sir. cubitus varus deformity with no neurologic deficit, past history of <coughs> massage. Yes, sir. so i would like to proceed to get radiographic images in mm. ap and lateral views anteroposterior and lateral views of of the elbow joint sorry of the left elbow of the el- left elbow joint yes. okay show the yes. x ray can you make out clinically whether it's a mal union or a go- growth arrest uh, so the length of the um, you uh, this thing sir arm um, so the length of the arm would be uh, more uh, would be uh, lesser on the affected side if that's a growth later uh, read the x rays yes so can we send the patient back out okay yes Good evening, sir. This is an X-ray of the anteroposterior and lateral views of the elbow joint. No, no. This X-ray both looks AP only, right? Jara focus karo bara bara. These are AP views. Uh, so actually, this was taken elsewhere. So this is lateral on the. Uh, right but then you the must take the before presentation. You must take the lateral. Uh, yes, sir. So these are the old X-rays. The new. Which X-ray unit patient X-ray. this is? So the latest X-rays are here, sir. No, no. But to show the latest X-rays, no, now. Yes. If so asked, then only we will go for the previous X-rays. So okay. PowerPoint to full view, करना. Yes, sir. Rohit, PowerPoint to full full view. Oh, कर तो. Yes. Welcome, Professor Dar. <coughs> Listening. Your man. highly skilled knowledge will be appreciated, future BOS president. <laughs> मैं खाली सुन रहा हूँ तुम लोग नहीं बाबा सीखा हुआ भी यार और सुनील शेट्टी फ्यूचर वाइस प्रेसिडेंट मैत्र भाग जाएगा सब लोग पूछेंगे तो मैत्र नहीं भागेगा लगाओ यस पूरा उसको करना क्लिक कि क्या बोलते हैं उसको स्क्रीन यू ये तेरा स्लाइड शो करो स्लाइड शो पूरा कर लो राइट हैंड लोअर कॉर्नर में देखना लास्ट स्क्रीन एक कैन नॉट सी एनीथिंग यार अरे उससे अच्छा नीचे क्लिक करना राइट हैंड कॉर्नर पे यस यस राइट हैंड कॉर्नर पे देखना वो क्या है उससे आगे वो नीचे ये क्लिक कर वही वही क्लिक कर तो वो क्लिक किया एक्चुअली नहीं हो रहा है 
हम लोग वही कर चलो ठीक है करो जो भी है लास्ट एक्सरे बताओ अरे इसमें तो लैटरल दिखता ही नहीं हाँ थोड़ा बड़ा करो So this is an X-ray of the left elbow in anteroposterior and lateral elbows. So the X-ray shows an angulation due to uh, carrying angle of 10 degrees varus. अरे किधर वायरस है इसमें यू आर शोइंग द राइट साइड एक्सरे नो नो सो एक्चुअली द लेफ्ट साइड एक्सरे बट वायरस एंड ऑन द लैटरल व्यू इट्स नॉट अ डेड लैटरल एक्सरे इट्स लाइटली रोटेटेड यू कैन विजुअलाइज द अल्ला वायरस है कि वायरस है क्या है Say actually it's a virus, sir. Uh, the X-ray is taken in the in rotation. That's why. It's... In exams, there has to be proper X-rays, huh? If this is the X-ray, if you show in the exam, then everything is haywire. All your findings are out. Yes, sir. What is what is the significance of lateral X-ray, dead lateral X-ray in this patient? Uh, Yes, sir. So in uh, dead lateral X-ray, you can see the anterior humeral humeral line, which mm-hmm. should pass through the capital lung. If it What is, is anterior, anterior humeral line? Uh, so anterior humeral line is the line placed on the anterior surface of the humerus. Mm-hmm. It should generally pass through anterior the capital lung. Anterior surface, na anterior border of the humerus. So yes, yes sir. anterior border of the humerus. Ah. Uh-huh. It should pass through the capital lung. Uh, so what is happening here now? Uh, Sir, uh, yeah, sir, it is passing actually through the capital lung. Hmm. It's normal or abnormal? Uh, sir, it is actually normal. If the line passes in front of the capital lung, that means it suggests a posterior fat pad sign, a fat pad sign, which is uh, suggestive of grade one supraventricular fat. Posterior fat sign has nothing to do with this line. Ah, oi. Yes, sir, oh, sir in grade 2 supracondylar fractures. It passes in front two. of the capsule. See, See when you cut when you in. draw an anterior humeral line. Yes. Sir. Okay. What is the significance? It has to lie where that line when you come down from proximal to distal. So it should lie on the anterior border of humerus and it should pass through the capsule. Ah. It should pass through the middle third of the capsule. Middle third of the capsule. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Sir. So yes, if it doesn't pass, means what? So uh, uh, that means there is uh, some type of uh, deformity, sir. Hmm. What is Bowman's angle? Uh, so Bowman's angle is the angle between the line drawn from the axis of the humerus, long axis, hmm. long axis of the humerus, and hmm. uh, perpendicular to the uh, lateral condyle physeal line. Any other angles are there? What is a normal uh, yes. Bowman's angle? So a normal Bowman's angle extends from sixty-four to eighty-one degrees. Hmm. Spelling uh, of Bowman. Generally, B A U M A N. M A N. Single N. M A N. M A double N. Double N. Double N. Yes. Ah. Any so other angles are there? Uh, so there is a carrying angle. Bowman's carrying angle, no. For these deformities, apart from Bowman's angle, any other angles are there? I don't know, sir. Any any third year postgraduate? So, Clapp uh, Sherman's angle. Who is he? Who is this? Sivam. Sivam. Hmm. That's what is it? 
So it is a metaphysical di- uh, diaphysical angle uh, which we can diaphysical metaphysical angle. Uh, what is the significance of it? How do you know? So it is normally ninety degrees. Uh, if it mm-hmm. is more than ninety, it is usually uh, uh, various deformity. Sure, or less than ninety. So more than ninety. And otherwise, um, uh, it then it could be a valgus deformity. Less than ninety. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, any other angle? Any third year can answer, ah? Huh? Find out. Go ahead. What is the fat fat sign you said? Fat fat sign. How oh, many fat fat sir? There? So there is one fat fat sir. There are two. On the posterior. One is in the olecranon fossa and one is anterior in the coronoid fossa. Okay, sir. Sorry, sir. Yeah. Sorry, sir. 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 S
Okay. So there are uh, the other different types of osteotomies which I could use, sir, are the dome-shaped osteotomy, step-cut osteotomy, and also okay. a medial. Yes, sir. Medial. Yes, modified modified French osteotomy and sir uh, medial opening wedge osteotomy. Sir. Okay. With bone graft. So which is the preferred osteotomy? The preferred is sir a French osteotomy sir or Wilkes osteotomy. Hmm. What is the difference between French and modified French? Uh, sir, in French osteotomy, uh, you take a longitudinal incision and uh, uh, in both you take the longitudinal incision, right? Yes, yes. Sir, the approach for French is posterior lateral, whereas for modified French it's just posterior, sir. Uh, mm. In post, in French, sir, you have to uh, detach the entire of the triceps, but in modified French, you just detach the lateral half of the triceps. Mm. And in French, sir, the ulnar nerve is explored, whereas in in modified French, sir, we we don't usually explore the ulnar nerve. Mm. Anything else? Uh, so and the cortex is broken, sir, in French osteotomy, mm. and in modified French, the medial cortex is intact, so it is mm. more uh, stable. Google Jindabad. <laughs> okay, what are the complications of French osteotomy? Uh, so there can be uh, infections generally, then uh, nerve uh, nerve paralysis, neurovascular injuries. Mm. So uh, in nowadays they don't sir, do French osteotomy. Why? So, uh, because of the instability and uh, the, they could be uh, need for recorrection. Lateral prominence, lateral capital lateral prominence. Yes, sir. Uh, that is you, quite sir. common with this French osteotomy. Yes. Sir. Nowadays, if you ask the pediatric ortho people, they will not do French or modified French. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Who is this? Dome osteotomy. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes. To read dome. Dome osteotomy. So, what are the basic yes, features? Are first thing is you have to know whether this disease is progressive or static. Number one. Yes. Second, sir. the age of the patient. If yes, the sir. child is less than six seven years, give a time for progressive remodeling. But yes, beyond sir. six to seven years of age, the remodeling usually of the deformity doesn't take place. Okay, yes, so the decision yes, for surgery has to be taken when the deformity becomes static. So when you see the patient, you have to yes, wait for three months. And after yes, three months, you decide to operate. And before you okay, operate, sir. you have to plan the osteotomy properly by taking x-ray of the opposite elbow. Proper yes, x-rays is mandatory, not the x-rays which you have shown on this screen. Okay. Yes, yes, if sir. required, if required, do a CT scan. If required, yes, it's not mandatory to do CT scan in all the patients. And neurologic yes. deficits have to be properly assessed and written on the pa patient's pre-op notes or uh, in the patient's indoor reports. Now, yes, two three questions. Once you correct these deformities, okay, yes, what yes, you want? Then you have to immobilize the elbow. Uh, so the elbow will be in uh, 62, uh, so 45 to 60 degrees of flexion. 40 to 65 degrees of flexion? Sure, huh? Um, generally, to sir. Get uh, moments, to get moments, flexion yes, to extension is easy or extension to flexion is easy. Uh, extension to flexion, sir. <laughs> extension to flexion is easy. Sure, no? Uh, what you are talking? Yes. Which is gravity assisted. Uh, so, extension to flexion, sir. Extension to zero, sir. Uh, flexion to extension, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are the various implants which are used to uh, fix the osteotomy? Just enumerate them. Yes, so the K wires, then you can use uh, cortical screws, a reconstruction plate, uh, an mm -hmm. SS wire, also mm -hmm. external fixators. 
Hmm. Any other questions, Professor Dar, Professor Shetty? This was operated or this is uh, neglected? Neglected. Neglected. Could this still be a evas necrosis of the trochlea? Yes, sir. They could be. What are the other causes of uh, cubitus varus? Apart from this, what cause you told? Traumatic. There could be a non-union of the lateral condyle, sir. Okay. And a malunited supracondylar fracture. Just now, Sunil said no avian of the trochlea. Yes, sir. avian of the trochlea. Then epiphyseal arrests. There could be a medial growth plate arrest, which can lead to the, this type of deformity. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm? Yes, sir, sir, you have to ask me. Sanjay, sir. No, no, no. Okay, then. I thank the Ortho TV, Dr. Ashok Sham, Dr. Bijlani. Thank you, Dr. Sunil Chetty, Dr. Sanjay, sir, and Dr. Raju Patil, and of course, Dr. Rohan Gala, His Excellency. For arranging this cubital forest presentation. Thank, thank you all. Thank you, thank you, sir. 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 Thank you,